Now, there are a lot of different variants uh, for the RC label. Another popular one that you might see is Victrola, which is this here. Victrola is kind of like, uh, you usually see these, by the way, these are all classical titles, most of them. Um, is that there? You'll see the Victrola. Almost all of Victrola labels are um, mono. Um, so you'll notice that. Uh, that usually, this is a Fritz uh, Chrysler, the final in it. Um, this was also produced on Dynaflex, you can tell right away, because it's just, vinyl really should never be this easy to bend, I mean, this it just takes um, a little bit of vibration to, to bend it. Oh, it's in very, this, this is in near mint condition, this record, but, um, you can see it says mono. They still sounded uh, pretty well, a lot of these recordings are um, very old recordings. They'll actually use older recordings from uh, the turn of the century uh, for collectible records and such. But um, yeah, you'll notice how flexible those are. That's that you really shouldn't be able to do that with a record. Uh, but they really thought it was revolutionary, and it it uh, it really isn't. <laughs> Um, so there's another part of, uh, you'll have to excuse the dog barking in the background, that's my sister's obnoxious, uh, Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Um, anyway, um, Dynagroove, which was kind of a, uh, another recording process that RCA released, um, in 1963, and it was a gimmick, I, well, I wouldn't necessarily call it gimmick, um, that they pretty much said used electronic brains to modify the audio signal. And in other words, um, they kind of made the groove when they cut the record to, to sort of fit the stylus. And it wasn't really perceived very well. A lot of people liked it. Um, it usually went hand in hand with RCA's Dynaflex, which kind of made <laughs> Dynaflex records even worse. Um, and there was a lot of uh, a Goddard uh, Lieberson who was um, with Columbia Records at the time. He, he called it a step away from the, the faithful reproduction of the artist, artist's performance. Um, and then, of course, there's Harry Pearson's review from the Absolute Sound, who termed it Dynagroove for that wooden sound. It really, um, you know, I, it's not too bad. It, it, it could be worse, <laughs> I guess. Um, it does sound a little bit muffled. It's not as warm. It really... Okay, so that's pretty much Dynagroove in a nutshell. Um, this was a a um, promotion record put by Buick, um, the car maker, the GM car maker. Um, and it's called The Sound of Tomorrow. And this was really promoting RCA's Dynagroove. Um, it's got a couple different titles. I actually don't think I have any of these titles, believe it or not. Um, I really would like, I'd, I'd be interested to see this one, the new threshold sound, I think that would be very interesting. Um, it's got an advertisement for Buick's car, um, and it kind of explains Dynagroove a little bit more. Um, as far as it looking different, it, it really doesn't, there's nothing, I, I don't think physically, you could probably see, oops, a lot of focus there, on the grooves, at least not that I could tell, maybe, maybe if you look very closely. Um, but it does promote it. This is a living stereo, so this is a, a technically a, a red seal. And it says Dynagroove. The quality of this vinyl is much better. As you can see, it's much more difficult to try to bend it. Um, so that's a promotion record. Um, I'll show you just one of the ones that was actually put into production. You'll usually see it advertised if, um, if it's one of the slightly older when, when Dynagroove first come out, they'll put it right on the cover. Um, a lot of times, uh, some of their later, or the earlier, no, I should say later, records won't really advertise it. Sometimes they'll advertise it on the back, or they'll just put it on the label itself. Um, it says Dynagroove recordings are mastered on RCA magnetic tape, and they actually used to use it, and they used to sell RCA tape, uh, Red Seal tape. It wasn't very good. Definitely wasn't as good as EMI tape, but 
This particular one is mono, and you can tell right away, usually because a lot of the mono releases have black inner um, sleeves. As you can see, it says mono down there. This record is in very bad shape. Hopefully I didn't, I think I only paid a dollar for it, so. If I paid more than a dollar, I was a fool, but. Uh, there's only one more RCA record I want to show you um, that I thought was kind of interesting. This is a box set of an RCA Red Seal. It's a limited edition. This is um, Opera. I'm not an opera guy. Uh, I only kept this because I like to collect RCA stuff. So, um, as far as its content, I've actually never listened to it. Um, to be quite honest, I'm not. I just don't understand opera. I'm just not one of those people. But it's really an interesting issue. Um, on the front, when it was originally wrapped in cellophane, it had this advertisement. This album includes an exclusive collector's memento, and uh, it's this actually, this piece of cloth. Uh, from the Mets, supposedly from the Mets uh, curtain. And it's numbered. And it's just a piece of, supposedly a piece of the curtain. And it's in very good condition. There's no stains or creases. Um, but I thought that was kind of cool. I've never seen that in a record before. It just fits into this little slit right here. It's a pretty large vibrato, pretty extensive. Um, I guess if you're into opera, it would be very interesting. That's a mono recording, which I thought was also interesting, considering it was supposedly a limited edition collector series. I would have thought, I assume that they offered it both in mono and stereo. It's in mint condition. This is from that collection that I received, the, the opera collection. I had that on one of my other videos. Um, he was very, this is 1966, so he was very, um, obsessive about his collection. So that's RCA. I'll move on to a different label.